The reason why I picked this simpler example is because kernel is simpler to calculate. Um, so how do we do that? Well, if you remember, according to kernel, also, let me cheat and see the definition. Uh, you have to calculate uh, what's called a player's uh, bargaining power or sort of the, the surplus of player A or player I over player J. All right. So we call it SIJ, remember? It's the maximum of few things. Uh, v of S minus summation of uh, xi, where i from uh, this coalition s, uh, well, okay, this is why I used k, I'm sorry, because i is already belonging to this in order not to confuse it. So this is xk, such that uh, this s is a subset of n, obviously, it's a coalition, but not all coalitions, I must be in this coalition and J shouldn't be in this coalition, okay? All right, this is exactly how we calculate sort of the bargaining power of player I, I mean, bargaining power, quote unquote, uh, player I against player B uh, or J, I'm sorry. So here, let's calculate S, A, B. All right, so first, let's determine what are those subsets S where I is in S and J is not? Okay, so let's be clear about this. Well, those S's where A is in but B is not is, well, the coalition A itself, obviously. And what else? Coalition AC. That's it. Because all the other coalitions have B in it, right? Here, for example, here A is not in. Uh, AC, we already said. So that's it. These are potential sets S. Okay. Well, then. Oh, wait, sorry. Are we ignoring the null coalition as well? Which coalition? The null one. Oh, oh, oh I see. Uh, well, actually, according to this definition, you don't. But, okay, good question. Is S one of those coalitions? Uh, empty uh, coalition? No. Why? Well, because I, I mean, player A is not in empty coalition, right? So therefore, empty coalition is not included in, 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 in this. I mean, it's not covered by this definition, all right? So I ignore it. Does, does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay, very good. So what is this equal to? Well, it's equal to maximum. All right, so I need to calculate those things for S equals A and for S equals AC, because there are two such sets S. All right, so the first one, V of uh, A, this is what S is, minus summation of XA. I mean, right, there's only one element, so it's basically A. Remember, this is, uh, remember we are looking for a vector ABC, so therefore xa is equal to a. So that's, that's it. This is the first term and this is for uh, set uh, a. And the second term is when set is equal to ac. So in this case, I have vac minus, uh, well, what is the total uh, payoff these two guys get, a and c? Well, it's a plus c or uh, minus c because I'm subtracting, remember? So that's it. So this is what uh, I am taking max over. Well, what is VA? Well, VA, let me rewrite this thing. Well, this thing is equal to max of, the VA is zero, so it's minus A. Uh, v of AC is equal to one, so one minus A minus C. Okay. Uh, Remember, the feasibilities are sort of God-given uh, sort of conditions, all right? So the feasibilities always has to hold. So minus A is a negative number. A plus C, we know by feasibility, will never uh, exceed one. So therefore, this is a positive number, whatever the value of A is and C is. So this is positive, uh, I mean, at least zero. This is at most zero. So therefore, this max always equals to one, uh, one, oops, one minus A minus C. I hope that is clear. Any question? Yeah, we just put B then because of the feasibility constraint, because one minus A 
to save money as CSG speed? Um, well, yeah, sure, I can, I can do that. I mean, this is also equal to B by feasibility. And yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is SAB, remember? Uh, let me just clear this part and take a note here and say SAB is equal to, uh, well, yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Let's just say it is equal to B. Very good, thanks. Um, now, I'm going to do SBA, remember? And then I compare SAB with SBA. Uh, this is the definition of kernel. So what is SBA? Well, this time I'm going to take max again, the same thing. But first, what are the set S's this time? So S is going to be, remember, a subset of N where B is in it, A is not. Because I is this time B and J is this time uh, A. So B is in it, so a singleton coalition B, and, and, and uh, well, A is not, okay? Uh, so B is in it, so B, C, and that's it, okay? So uh, once again, when I calculate this, this is going to be V, B minus B, the first term, and then V, B, C minus uh, B minus C. This is the second term. Same thing, VB is equal to zero, VBC is equal to one. So this is a maximum of minus B and one minus B minus C, which is by the way, A by feasibility, right? And the max of this is always this term because this guy at most zero, all right, if B is zero and this guy at least zero. So therefore this guy, if it is zero, it's equal to A. If it is greater than zero, if it is, I mean, it is still A. So therefore, this guy is always A. So S of B A is equal to A. Okay? Good. Uh, what else? Let's do the following. S A C. S A C and then as CA, and then BC, CB, etc. But hopefully I will not have to go through, uh, you know, a, a another round. So max, so once again, uh, what are the possible set S? Well, A is in it, but C is not. So A and AB, uh, that's the only two coalitions. So therefore, what is VO, VA minus A? This is the first thing that we are comparing. And then VAB minus A minus B. Uh, this is the second thing we're comparing. So this is VA is zero minus A. This is one minus A minus B, which is equal to C. So therefore, this thing is equal to C. All right, S, uh, AC is equal to C. All right. Um, Okay, well, if you do the calculation, again, I'm not gonna do it, uh, but I am kind of confident that SCA is also going to be equal to A, all right? Um, and then, to be honest, if you do SAB, this is probably going to be equal to B, and then SBA, this is gonna be equal to A, all right? Uh, good, so what? Well, now the, let's, so did, Go ahead. You mean CB and BC, right? Uh, okay, hold on. At the bottom. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, this should be BC and CB. Yes, thank you very much. BC and CB. So if this is BC, then this is C. And this is CB, then it is uh, B. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, all right, so what is next? Well, remember... The kernel was saying the following. It was making, you know, any X, right, which is A, B, C, should satisfy the following, it says. Uh, one, uh, S, I, J equals S, J, B. I mean, if this is the true, uh, oh, well, yeah, it leaves it there. Then it doesn't say anything. Or two, if S, I, J is greater than S, J, B, is like the bargaining power of I is greater than bargaining power of J, well, then X, J must be equal to V of J, all right? And then third, if S, I, J is less than S, J, B, 
well then xi has to be vi but don't forget vj vi here are zero right uh, so these are zero okay let's and xj xi actually means either a or b or c all right so the first comparison therefore implies the following either a is equal to b right or if B is greater than or a, 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 right? If B is greater than A, well then, uh, who has to be a, a value zero? Remember, A, B, the S, A, B is greater than, all right? So I is equal to A, so J is equal to B. So therefore, if B, A is true, well then in this case, B should have the value. So B is equal to zero, right? or uh, a is greater than b in this case it, i mean i is still a and j is still b but this time b is less than a so therefore a has to be zero if this is the case well then a is equal to zero let's pause a minute all right and think about this it says Bro, if B is greater than A, well, then the value of B should be zero. Can this be possible? No. Why? Well, remember A, B, C, by feasibility, they are all non-zero elements. If B is a number greater than, strictly greater than A, and B is zero, that means A must be negative, which is impossible. So this can never happen. Same, this can also never happen. So these two cases are impossible to hold in this problem. So therefore, A has to be equal to B. Okay? Good. If you do the exact the same analysis I am skipping, you'll see that when you use this, C must be equal to A. And when you use this, C must be equal to B. That means in the kernel, a must be equal to B, B must be equal to C. Which means, therefore, the kernel, there's a unique kernel, one third, one third, one third. Because remember, if all are the same thing, uh, I use feasibility, A plus C equals one, and they all are the same number, and so is that three A equals one, A is equal to one third, so, so does B and, and C. So this is how we, find the kernel. Any question, guys?